Chichester Harbour is an area of outstanding natural beauty. The harbour is one of the few remaining undeveloped coastal areas in southern England. Its bright wide expanses and intricate creeks are a major wildlife haven and among some of Britain's most popular boating waters. The massive stretch of tidal flats and salt marsh are of outstanding ecological significance. Very large populations of wildfowl and waders feed on the mudflats. Under the waves, the harbour is crowded with life. Pontoon pilings and mooring chains are covered in a wealth of colourful seaweeds and animals, and reefs of native oysters provide a home for bright red sea squirts, hydroids and sponges. The worms, crustaceans and mollusks that provide food for the harbour birds also sustain a rich food chain below the water. The shallow waters teem with plankton and are an important nursery area for young fish. A team of divers recently undertook a survey of these unseen habitats and were able to bring back underwater images revealing what life is like in our local coastal waters. The divers found 220 different species of plants and animals. Hermit crabs don't have their own armour, so they borrow discarded shells instead. As the crab grows, it needs to find a new home and will carry out a thorough inspection before moving in. Most fish are quite shy and hid from divers, so only a few were recorded, including this sand goby. One of the rarer finds was this mollusk, which was seen in areas of soft mud. It's only partly shelled and grazes on the mud. There is a small commercial oyster fishery in Chichester Harbour, and oysters breed in May and August, when they are inedible. Hence the saying, only eat oysters when there's an R in the month. 26 types of sea squat were recorded, and these are notoriously difficult to identify accurately. Although very common, the slipper limpet is not a native species. Here they are stacked up. The largest one at the bottom is female, and the one at the top is male. Bryozones look more like plants than animals. This is a finger bryozone. The spider crab, like other crabs, has to shed its shell as it grows. This leaves the animal vulnerable for a short while until the shell regrows. The squat lobster looks like a cross between a crab and a lobster. It often shrinks out of view when approached. The snakelox anemone was one of the most commonly found anemones. These are carnivorous and feed on small marine animals such as shrimps and prawns. Peacock worms are the most widespread of the bristle worm family. To feed, the worm extends its tentacles into the water to filter organic matter and small creatures. This pipefish is hiding below some peacock worms. The fish is a close relative of the seahorse. Shore crabs are one of the most commonly found crabs and can often be fished out of the water with a piece of bacon on a string. The divers recorded 34 habitat types showing the sheer variety of the seabed. These were categorised as muddy mud, sandy mud, muddy sand and all options in between. The two-spot goby darts around near the seabed. These gobies are usually found in small groups. Life thrives on the seabed with a rich variety of seaweeds. These bryzones and hydroids are actually animals although they look like plants. The colourful wrasse are some of the most commonly seen fish in our coastal waters. Shore crabs will eat almost anything, including biting bits off each other. 
The good news is that they can regrow limbs or claws that have been damaged by predators. These fighting spider crabs have sponges growing on their shells. A snake's lock anemone wafts in the current. Dahlia anemones are a powerful predator and are able to catch and devour surprisingly large fish. The leathery sea squirt is actually a native of the Pacific Ocean and is thought to have been brought to our shores on the hulls of ships. 26 types of sea squirts were recorded, including this star sea squirt. These form colonies on pebbles and cobbles. The shiny spider crab camouflages itself with bits of seaweed and sponge. The variety of species and the clarity of our local waters was a surprise to the divers, who could happily spend hours observing the creatures in their natural habitat. The anemone Sigatia elegans doesn't have a common name. It can be found in several different colour combinations. This animal has the lovely name of Helter Skelter Hydroid. They are normally found attached to slipper limpet shells or stones. This slender fish is a dragon net. They are capable of blending in perfectly with a coarse sand or gravel seabed. The netted dogwhelk is a common sight on sand, particularly where there are rocks nearby. It has a neat rectangular pattern on its shell. The divers reported that all sites appeared to be in a healthy condition. Continued monitoring of the seabed tells us more about climate change, water quality and pollution, and also the impacts of fishing. <laughs>